Tatooine shuttle is approved for landing at Weapons Factory Alpha and is welcome to Psy Moon 1. However, the Imperial officer at the factory is not pleased with the presence of Outer Rim scum. The shuttle arrives, and a man introduces himself as a special envoy to the illustrious Jabba the Hutt. His name is Han Solo. The Imperials confirm his identity, while the officer says that the group will need to surrender their weapons. Han agrees, as Chewbacca observes the exchange from a distance, armed and ready for a fight. Over the comm system, C-3PO happily notices that the Imperials seem to believe that Han is indeed the envoy to Jabba the Hutt, and remarks that he has a good feeling about all of this. Inside, the officer says that the negotiator will be arriving soon, but it does not take long for Han to reveal that they are not here to negotiate. Han signals R2-D2, who begins to leak fluids on the factory floor. Han is confused until R2 ignites a spark plug and electrocutes the stormtroopers, while Han's bodyguards, revealed to be Luke and Leia, spring into action and take out the rest of the troopers. The Imperial officer is shocked and says that this moon is the most heavily guarded base in the galaxy, but the rebels are unfazed. The group heads to the central power station and prepares to overload the system. Meanwhile, Luke senses something and finds a cage full of alien slaves. Though a guard tries to stop the Jedi, he is no match for Luke, who frees the aliens. As they prepare to escape the base, Chewbacca sees that a ship is approaching the factory. The Imperial Negotiator has arrived. At the news of Vader's arrival, Leia demands that Chewie take the shot. Their own lives are not worth the tremendous value of taking out Darth Vader. But when Chewbacca fires, the Dark Lord easily deflects the shot and proceeds to hurl stormtroopers in his way before bringing the tower Chewie is standing in down around him. Han asks C-3PO to send in the Millennium Falcon, but local scavengers have begun to dismantle the ship. Han says that 3PO will have to use a blaster to clear them out, which worries the poor droid. Luckily, the rebels have managed to find an alternate means of transportation. Han is confident that he can pilot an Imperial walker to safety, but Leia notices that Luke is missing. In the halls of the factory, Luke hears Ben's voice deliver a simple message. Run. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Star Wars number one. Oh man, this was so cool. I'm sorry, I'm really geeking out on this one. For those who aren't aware, this is the first Star Wars comic published by Marvel since Disney acquired the Star Wars franchise. Now personally, I wasn't that excited by this move because frankly, Disney owns enough intellectual property as it is. And even though Jason Aaron has been attached to write this thing for some time, and I really think he is a fantastic writer, I still wasn't sold on a new Star Wars comic. So I wound up reviewing this mostly on a lark and out of just general curiosity. Honestly, I was planning on skipping this one, but oh man, I'm really glad I did it. See, I really do like Star Wars, but after the prequels and all the other malarkey, I was really kind of done with this franchise. This comic helped remind me why I like Star Wars to begin with. This felt so much closer to the original trilogy than anything Star Wars I have seen, read, or even played in several years. And it was pretty cool seeing the original gang back together. I didn't realize how much I missed them until I saw them back in action. It was fun seeing all the original characters together again, and this comic does a really good job of bringing them back through both comedy and drama while also sprinkling in little references to lines in the original movie and other little details without going too overboard with either of them. And on top of all that, so many awesome little moments are crammed in here. Between Darth Vader hurling stormtroopers around like an actual meat shield, and the idea of using an Imperial Walker as their escape vehicle, there's just too much awesome for me to cover in just one review. This comic has me really excited for not only the ongoing Star Wars series, but I'm also getting pretty pumped for the upcoming movie this year now. For a single comic to be able to do that to me is pretty remarkable, and I'm really impressed. So yeah, if you can't tell, I really enjoyed this comic. I haven't been this excited reading a comic book since that last Batman issue, and I recommend you pick up Star Wars number one for yourself. There is just too much awesome in this comic to miss. That being said, there is one major fault that bothered me. 
I'm just not a fan of the art style here, particularly when it comes to the facial expressions. There's just something about everyone's face in this comic that looks so... artificial. It can be really off-putting at times, but it isn't that big a deal, and the artist John Cassidy does a really good job conveying the excellent action scenes, as well as the type of aesthetic and tone that one would expect of a Star Wars comic. So overall, I do feel like this entire creative team did a really good job with this issue. Let me know what you think of Star Wars number 1 in the comments section below. Also, be sure to check out our website and Facebook page in the video description. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.